Hello, I'm Aminta Dawson with the ACES staff. I want to welcome everyone to today's webinar entitled Getting Started with SQLite, sponsored by DCMI. Our distinguished presenter is Nishad Dalath, who will be introduced by our moderator, Dr. Inkyung Choi. Dr. Inkyung Choi is a teaching assistant professor at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. Her research interests stem from her intellectual curiosity about social and cultural pluralistic perspectives, which influence ways of organizing knowledge. She also serves at the DCMI Education Committee. I'd like to thank, I'd like to ask the audience to type your questions into the question panel box and they'll be answered at the end of the presentation. I will now turn this session over to Dr. Inkyung Choi, who will introduce our presenter. Uh, <clears throat> thank you for a great introduction. Um, Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining um, this uh, webinar uh, with Nishad. Uh, Nishad Talhat, is a, he is a doctor's candidate in information science um, and a member of the Metadata Laboratory at the School of Library, Media, and Information Study, University of uh, Tsukuba, Japan. His research interests include metadata standard, knowledge graph, and then metadata or data interoperability. Um, as outside of uh, his um, library information science, um, for around two decades, he has worked as a developer, engineer, and consultant in the various IT projects. He currently works as a part-time researcher in the laboratory uh, for large-scale biomedical data technology, uh, Riken Center, uh, for Integrative Medical Science Japan, where he develops and manages the metadata and integration system uh, for omics data. Um, today, uh, he will share his knowledge in SQLite with us. Uh, so please join me in welcoming Nishad. Yeah. Thank you, Amina. Thank you, you. And um, thanks for everyone for joining this webinar and giving an opportunity to present um, SQLite or present some idea, basic ideas about SQLite. <clears throat> so this uh, webinar is uh, basically intended to be kind of a preface for Dublin Core Metadata Initiative, DCMI's Education Committee tutorial series on SQLite. So in this webinar, I'll, I'll try to introduce S the concept of SQLite and why SQLite is really significant and important now. And I would like to give some overview uh, why we should think about adopting SQLite as one of the potential SQL database. And uh, some of the specialities of SQLite and um, how to interact with SQL and introduce some tools and basic concept of uh, query. We'll have a detailed uh, hands-on training during our tutorial series of uh, SQLite in Dublin Core, but uh, consider this webinar as a preface to that. So to start with, let's have a uh, look at what's data pit systems. And everybody use data. And we generate huge amount of data every day. And especially assist and Dublin Core community is much more related to uh, data management, data warehousing, and other aspects of uh, data handling. So I don't think we actually need an introduction here, but anyway, the short overview is uh, database systems are softwares that manages data stored in a computer. And they generally provide data access uh, so the users can access this uh, data using these systems or the softwares. Then one of the main aspects of this database system is data integrity. So it ensures that the consistency and integrity of data throughout the transactions and it maintains some constraints to validate the data, whether it is the, uh, the data which comes in and goes out uh, others to the constraints uh, maintainers set to the database. So Generally, long back, we had these file-based systems and paper documents and file that I mean, data stored on files and pages. But when we moved that to modern IT infrastructures and information systems, we actually tend to keep them on this kind of systems than 
the old files or folder based uh, i mean like approaches so as a basic overview of uh, database systems we can consider them sql and no sql databases so this is just a basic overview but when we go in detail there are many variant uh, aspects of uh, database systems but for this uh, for the sake of this presentation let's consider only sql database and no sql database so SQL is also being pronounced SQL, so at some places we use SQL, but generally SQL or SQL, SQL databases or NoSQL or NoSQL databases. So generally SQL databases are relational database. Relational database means they we, we keep the data in different tables, generally like what you see in your spreadsheet. And we try to make relationship from one table to another uh, using some uh, connections or we call them foreign keys or relationship then we used uh, a querying language called sql or structured query language to query or manage or manipulate the data so some of the example is mysql which is the most popular uh, sql database then postgresql which is actually another uh, well established uh, SQL database, then MariaDB, which is a variant of MySQL, then SQLite, etc. But uh, the uh, and on the, on the other hand, no SQL database doesn't have any relation between them, or generally they don't have. Uh, but uh, they keep data as a uh, structured format, like for example, if you're familiar with the concept of JSON, etc., they keep them like that. Then they're getting really popular nowadays and the use cases are totally different from SQL databases. Uh, some example is MongoDB, CouchDB, Cassandra, etc. But uh, during this classification, we, we talk only about uh, SQL databases, so we can kind of ignore no SQL database for the time being. There are various uh, relational databases, but some of them are really popular to you. So or probably you'll be using them for many of your projects or for uh, the systems. So MariaDB, which is actually uh, MySQL, then we have Microsoft SQL Server, then Cockroach is a highly fault tolerant SQL database. Then again, our SQLite, et cetera. Among all these popular databases, one of the biggest difference is all other databases which are in this category or the popular sql databases are a server client database system but sqlite is a serverless database system and that that's what makes it really interesting for us and that's the most important aspect of uh, sqlite so what is a client server database system on a client server database system the database actually I mean, the user actually interacts with a client application and the client application communicates to a database server hosted in the same machine or in a different uh, machine to using a network then the database server connects to a database and gives you the data back so it involves this two-tier architecture like there is this client and there is a server so you always need to establish a connection between this client and server to access your database um, which is fairly simple but it comes up with its own complication for example you have to provide a network connectivity you have to ensure authentication and other security aspect etc so it gets really complicated for many simple use cases on the other hand serverless databases are just databases which doesn't have a whole server concept because user directly interacts with an application and the application directly connects to a database or a database file one of the oldest example is microsoft access so which was the same concept or you can consider a spreadsheet like a serverless approach because you connect directly to your spreadsheet uh, or an excel file in your machine and just directly interacts with that so SQLite brings this serverless database approach to a, another level by introducing highly uh, competitive um, structure, I mean, relational database implementation. So why serverless databases are really um, important or what are the advantages they have? One of the most important aspects is it is highly flexible and portable because we don't need a dedicated infrastructure and 
it's it's very easy to move from one machine to another or one network or another or one system to another uh, then it is easy to maintain because you don't need to worry about the security and other aspects which you need uh, to consider when you actually have a uh, full-fledged server client uh, database systems then the deploy development speed is really fast it's just a just a file-based system or just a serverless system so we can easily replicate or easily create new versions and uh, continue our workflow without bothering about installing a server or the connectivity issues etc then the most important uh, aspect for for data management or data warehousing is it is easy to back up you just need to copy the file and save it just like you do with your spreadsheet or any other file uh, so you don't need to worry about a lot of other uh, other scenarios where, you, where, there, where, there, where there is a server involved in the database process so let's now go to sqlite and see what sqlite file format is so sqlite was created by uh, Richard Heap in 2000, so it's relatively not that old con old concept or old implementation. But the whole idea or goal was to develop something small, uh, fast, reliable, and a self-contained database engine. So most of these design goals came from uh, Dr. Heap's own projects and his own needs because uh, he realized most of the existing database systems out there in the market doesn't satisfy uh, some of the requirements he had uh, when he was working with some of the client projects. Then, in the last couple of years, uh, it just became one of the most widely used database systems in the world. So, uh, from from 2000 to uh, all these years, it became so popular because there wasn't a small, uh, reliable, and very self-contained database system existing in the world. So users suddenly jumped into this idea, and pretty much uh, everywhere it was being implemented, and every system it is being implemented. So some of the features which we need to think here or consider while we adopt this database is like. Um, if SQLite is your choice, is, 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 your record, is something that's suitable for your work use case or your workflow, then one of the basic and important aspect of SQLite it is it's multi-platform. So you don't need to worry about whether we are working in Linux or Windows or Mac or even embedded systems or even, 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 uh, even Android or any other platform. You don't need to worry. Uh, we don't need to worry about uh, which language you implement, uh, which which kind of implementation you have, and what kind of uh, software you use. SQLite is a multi-platform in all sense, which, which works in multi-softwares, multi-hardwares, and multi-devices. And it's 100% rich multi-platform, and it's proven for all these years. So uh, we, are, we are safe with that. Then about the scalability, because SQLite is even though it's it's a serverless architecture or it's a, it's a file-based database it is really useful for even smaller projects and when we consider bigger projects like data sets which goes to terabits of uh, terabytes in size sqlite is still capable so there is no other easy scalable solution which actually you can use to create your shopping list to a mega size one which you can manage billions of records and that's that's a level of scalability sqlite have then it's 100 percent is open source but there's a small catch because even though the source is 100 percent open sqlite is not open for contribution only three maintainers maintain sqlite and they only commit the code but still it is open and the big community is there they discuss and they report bugs and the adaptation curve is really big then it is a zero configuration database system because you just need to have the binary or the library there. You don't need to configure anything. It just it's, it works out of the box and that's the most uh, beautiful aspect of SQLite. Then final concept is SQLite is not exactly just a software because it's a full-fledged C library. 
So you can embed SQLite in any other programs or project or softwares uh, without a huge installation or huge external support. So uh, it's embeddable not only in your software, it is also embeddable in all type of hardware devices or even very smaller footprint systems. So uh, which actually kind of ex expanded the scope of SQLite and we believe that SQLite is everywhere now. Uh, even though you don't directly use it, all of your browsers, your operating systems, your softwares, your mobile devices, or even the automobiles and aircrafts and even space shuttles actually use this SQLite. So um, that's all we can, we have to consider while we think about SQLite, whether it's a suitable candidate or not. And the most important aspect of adopting SQLite as a database platform is it is is the ex, it's the most extensively tested software in the world it has over 10 million unit tests and almost 2.5 billion tests for every release and that's enormous and nothing goes to that level of testing even even in most of the popular open source software and the extensive level of testing comes from some of its use cases and some of its adopters or users are actually from the aviation and defense and other biggest industries. So they demand high level of quality for the code and quality for the software. So um, a, a lot of these tests were created for those specific uh, users and specific use cases where, where they need a really reliable software. And the advantage for us is we are getting a software which is fully tested and actually battle tested and which is really good that it has less bugs. So SQLite considered to be one of the low bug count software because of this extensive testing. Uh, there are very rare cases of data loss or corruption bugs because most of these bugs are either related to performance or implementation other issues. So, uh, we can consider that it is one of the robust and reliable code base out there. And uh, it, it that makes it a highly dependable choice for a wide range of applications. So we have to think about SQLite as a file-based database. So we consider this SQLite file format. The most important aspect of file, if this file format is a single file database. So the whole SQLite database with all its table sits in a single file and there is no constraint for an extension of a file for example for your excel file it, is, it should be xls or excel um, excel access extension but for sqlite you don't need to have a specific uh, file extension it can be dot db dot sqlite or dot database whatever it doesn't matter but it's a single file and it's single binary file uh, so being a binary file, you cannot open it in the text editor and edit like your CSV file or a text file, but it's a binary file. It is self-contained. All metadata about the database and all data which actually contained in the single file. So there is no other file uh, or other file relationship or you, do, you don't need to um, like consider a folder of files to be a single database. Everything is in a single database file. Then it's cross-platform, or a file which is created in one device or one platform works in another platform itself. So that's another uh, nice aspect. Then it's highly stable, and highly stable and long supportable. Like the SQLite file format didn't change much that it will never break uh, your code, or we don't need to worry about that what happens, a new version gonna change my file or file not getting used for any other new version of this SQLite, it doesn't happen because they committed for a long time support. So uh, Assistant Dublin Core is a community of uh, library, archives, and museums. So SQLite is a very potential uh, choice for this GLAM community. Mainly one of the biggest reasons is Library of Congress made uh, or announced or uh, recognizes uh, SQLite as one of the reliable digital preservation technologies. And SQLite is a recommended storage format for data sets, according to the US Library of Congress. Then it is widely used in archives, libraries, and other cultural heritage institutions for data preservation and data management. And if you collect and publish data 
one of the most reliable format is SQLite database format. So instead of publishing huge uh, CSV files or other TSV files or so that sort of tabular data file, you can actually publish data in a more reliable format. And that's what uh, the LOC recommends here. So that's the main reason we were thinking and planning a huge uh, tutorial series on SQLite and its use cases in GLAM community. So SQLite 5 format and the project, they, they committed to support until 2050. That's kind of a long span, the long time support that they could offer, which actually makes it the, one of the best choices for a, for a long time preservation aspect. And especially when we consider archiving data or uh, archiving scientific data and other stuff, we should always consider a long supported file format. And this is the biggest commitment, uh, biggest open commitment from any open source software developers that they're going to support it for a, this extensive time. And because of this uh, long time support commitment, uh, we could ensure that uh, the files which we create now will also work in future work versions of SQLite and also SQLite assures a backward compatibility so that uh, anytime uh, a file which created in this year can can work for a long time like after 20 years it's if, if you have a new SQLite version still uh, our database file is accessible readable and uh, usable then Whenever we consider about our relational databases, people have this really scary idea that you have to type your database. So if, if you ever uh, go through creating a database, you need to say, so you, for the tables, you have to create the type and the type should be either integer or um, like text. And you have to be really strict, be, be strict about uh, this. Uh, data types otherwise your database is going to complain and sometimes import or export uh, importing or exporting data is going to fail a lot of other problems but SQLite is a really nice choice um, about data typing what they think that SQLite should be typeless so they give, give kind of a free flow of data so it doesn't use any kind of strict types that that other databases or other relational databases uh, uses. So that makes it really easy to learn because you don't need to worry about a lot of data type constraints when you consider or build uh, SQLite tables or, or SQLite databases. So basically we declare some affinity on, on that. Uh, we say it can be integer, it can be a text or it can be uh, a, a blob or a binary object etc. But it's just an affinity. Affinity doesn't make that it should be that it kind of makes an assumption that it, it is better to be text, but still SQLite will accept if you throw in a number there, or if you, if you put a number in a text field, still it works. So that gives you the comfort of, or, or, or comfort of using a CSV file, but at the same time, it's queryable data type, um, queryable uh, using SQL. So what SQLite does is it magically maps the data type when you execute a query. For example, if you do a mathematical operation, then SQLite automatically treats that row as numbers. And when you do it, other type of text operation, it automatically treats it like a text. So it's highly flexible uh, to design and to develop and to maintain because uh, mixing of data types within a column is still permitted. So you don't need to worry about losing any data or getting really um, big compliance on it uh, because the database don't complain about your data it just keeps your data safe that's it then um, sqlite has biggest support in almost all languages so you can easily pick it and transfer it to any other platform uh, any other software say for example you have a database system created in python and use SQLite uh, as a backend. And when at some point you want to rewrite the, everything to Rust or any other language, still uh, there is no changes. You, your database works as it is without uh, much constraint. And most of the program language have built-in native support for SQLite. 
uh, that means you don't need to install any big third party library or nothing either they have the they have uh, a native supported library or they have a uh, direct um, support built within the language for example pipe PHP and Python have native support for SQLite. You don't need to install anything in the native library or standard library support SQLite. Then, of course, SQLite is a SQL database, so we just need to have some basic basic SQL concept. But the small webinar, the short webinar, is not 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 enough to cover entire concept of SQL. So if someone is here is new to SQL, I just want to give some basic introduction what SQL is. Uh, SQL means structured query language, or you can also call it SQL. Uh, so it's a standard language used for managing or manipulating or maintaining relational databases, which allow, allows you to create, alter or delete a data. Basic operations are like insert some information or delete some information uh, within those tables uh, as data elements then also data retrieval or other data aggregation tags. Uh, SQL is basically simple. It, it, it's not that complex like any other programming language. So you only need a couple of hours to somewhat master in it. So I can help pick a couple of important SQL uh, commands. So the three important one is create, alter, drop. They, they actually deals with the table. So if you need to create a new table, you have to use the create statement. And if you want to alter or modify an existing table, then you have to use the alter option. Then drop is to completely delete. Then select, insert, update, delete are basic keywords which are directly used for data, manipulating data or in, I mean like uh, getting data from the database table. So these four statements are more than enough to do almost every SQL uh, related data retrieval or data manipulation um, uh, I mean, queries. So select, we actually retrieve data and insert, we actually put and update and delete are for modifying or removing data from that table. I can show a simple example and this SQL is exclusively uh, written for SQLite. Uh, because SQLite doesn't need any data types to be declared. So if if you want to create a small table like this one, book ID, title, author, publication, year, uh, you can directly create a statement like this, create a table. Uh, the name of the table is books and create a book ID, table, author, publication, year. And when you put a semicolon, that means the SQL statement ends there. And when you execute this SQL, um, actually, that that gets executed and your table is being created and it's very simple as it is uh, the advantage of uh, sqlite considering any other sql database is if you want to do the same thing in mysql or any other sql you have to declare which data type this book id is uh, which data type this title is then you have to declare which is the primary uh, key and which should be unique etc so there is a big learning curve for learning SQL or SQL for any other uh, SQL database, but uh, relatively easier for SQLite. Then this is a simple SQL statement to put a data into a database. So uh, you can see uh, some of this uh, use cases here. Uh, so we put a simple row of uh, data to a book uh, database, a book table. So um, the insert statement is used here uh, for the book table. So we insert uh, this rows of information on the specific columns. Uh, so the insert statement first takes a table and then the columns, then we put values into it. So you can see the highlighted things are insert uh, into and table line and the values. That's it. Then you actually populate it. Then in the, in the real world scenario, mostly you don't directly write SQL queries to do this kind of operation, but just to demonstrate the idea that SQL, I mean, SQL is really easy to master with a couple of hours. So then retrieving data from the table, the SQL is really simple. Uh, you have to execute a select query. So you want only title, 
and publication year so we just try to select title publication year from the table and you get the data back that's so simple so you can either end it with an exclamation sorry uh, semicolon or just if it's only statement then it, it runs well with this glide then another uh, symbol query is select a data with some condition so for example here in this query we have select a star for everything from books where publication year is greater than 1990. so this query will get us back only one of the result so you can see that uh, the result gives exactly something one of these books which is published after 1990 and uh, the query demands to give back everything so that's why the star is there then we have everything back as it is so let's have a small destructuring of this uh, query and see how it works uh, if you take this query we can see that this select then we have uh, we have three keywords here select from and where so almost all sql queries for uh, select statements are written the same way uh, first we have to execute a select or declare it a select then we have to say from where you want to select uh, and the where keyword is kind of uh, uh, exactly a condition where uh, you can write a condition which satisfies uh, certain parameters we give and we get back the data so if you can exactly see that we give a select uh, to the rows so which all rows you sorry which are columns you want to get uh, from this database so select and here in this query we use star that means we need to get back everything but if you remember the previous one we selected oh we only need title and other then we have to write select title comma other uh, or you need title and publication here you can say select title comma publication here then you have to say from so we should say it's from books and from is really important um why we need to declare a specific table is because in in the real world scenario our sql database can have multiple tables so if you want to query or combine query from multiple tables we have to say from which table you want to select and this key, keyword actually connects to the location or the table where you are actually fetching your data from then finally where is a condition which actually satisfy to some of the criteria we want to filter this data out so uh, as i explained it is really easy to understand that a single statement like this uh, is, is easy to compose but the three keywords we try to remember is select from where so um, basically sqli sql is is simple like this but but when we go uh, to do more real world query we have to compose com query in such a way that which has more conditions and more uh, parameters and we have to query through different uh, tables to get this data out or combust our our output in a required manner so uh, i'm not covering all those aspects but basically this is what uh, we can do with sql then a couple of uh, tools which you can use to interact with SQLite. Uh, some of them are open source and uh, so, I mean, so I, I handpicked a couple of tools and one of the most important uh, tool or free tool uh, which, which, is, which is really handy is this SQLite command line tool. So SQLite provide a powerful command line tool. So actually it's not one, there, there are two, three command line tools which you can download along with sqlite uh, but uh, the the main important sqlite command line tool is just sqlite 3 dot exe or without exe in linux or mac so it's it, it's only a command line tool it doesn't have any graphical interface but it is really easy to use and lightweight and this command line tool is cross cross platform compatible so it works the same in linux windows and mac and everywhere so you don't need to worry about new command learning a new command in different platforms 
then it supports 100 percentage uh, sql syntaxes for data description manipulation and query just like the sql statement query we have seen then it support reading and writing data to and from the disk uh, so using this cli you can directly do most of this operation without writing a software or anything uh, then uh, the CLA is also capable of uh, using I mean, connecting to multiple databases or multiple SQLite files. Then it has two different type of command line inputs. Uh, one is it accepts parameters. Say for example, you can give the command as a parameter. Some some options as a parameter, and it has something called a dot command, which actually uh, gives some kind of advanced uh, options to interact with your database once the command line tool is loaded. Uh, I just uh, put a simple example here from our book database. So we invoke the command line tool calling SQLite3books.db. Then you can see that I enter a dot help. Um, so it says that you can enter a dot help for usage hints. But uh, when you are into SQLite uh, command line mode, it, it asks for a uh, dot table then it gives okay it has only one table it shares its book then a dot schema will give the schema of the book so it has uh, it has a table uh, schema which has a book id title other publication here then the final one is like uh, i executed a command sql i mean sql statement uh, to select everything from books so you can see it listed out all books uh, and it, it is it's there so SQL command line tool is highly powerful, but the problem is it, it has a very steep learning curve and sometimes people don't want to interact with the command line tool uh, as, a, as a beginner of SQL database. So um, one of the most popular open source alternative is DB browser of SQL. Uh, this is a free uh, open source tool, really nice GUI. You can download it from sqlitebrowser.org which which is really nice because you can use SQLite browser as a spreadsheet tool like you use Microsoft Excel or any other spreadsheet tool and you don't need to learn, know any SQL uh, or SQL uh, to or to edit or modify data or create tables or extract data because it has all graphical interface to do that like a spreadsheet but uh, DB browser is a really nice tool to learn SQL because whenever do some action like modify some value or add some value or do some filtering, uh, it has a SQL uh, logger which actually logs and tell you which SQL or SQL statement it executed. Uh, so you can actually compare your action and with the SQL and see how uh, how different they are and it's easy to uh, learn. SQL from DB browser. So it's one of the highly recommended tool for SQLite. Then another free and open source tool is SQLite Studio, uh, which is also well maintained. And this this is a little bit different from DB Studio. Um, basically, uh, SQLite Studio gives a advanced database editing to interface and but it is really innovative and easy to learn. So if you want to do the old type of uh, database management and creating tables and everything using a more powerful interface, Escalate Studio is a recommended tooling. Um, this also uh, kind of open source and well-maintained so you can download and install and just, just create a table from it. Uh, there is no big learning curve but uh you you have to and be familiar with the concept of uh, escalator tables and relationship etc then uh finally dbver community edition is uh, one of the really nice tool if if you have to convert a lot of data from other databases to sqlite or reverse for example, you did some development in SQLite in your machine, uh, in your local development environment, but if you want to migrate that data to MySQL or Postgres for 
for a production deployment or for other use cases, uh, then dBweaver is a really nice tool. Uh, dBweaver is highly powerful, and if you are an advanced SQL user, then uh, dBweaver also uh, also meant for the advanced users, and it has a really steep learning curve. But still, uh, the community edition is open source and free, so you can uh, use that for creating or manipulating tables and uh, pretty easier. Then the, the feature of SQLite is more powerful. And uh, nowadays we have SQLite running on cloud services. It just, not just a local database, it just actually changed the way it used to be. But one of the interesting project is SQLite, SQL.js, which is actually an SQLite uh, implementation in JavaScript and SQLite uh, SQL.js runs SQLite within web browser. So the advantage is you can make real complex uh, data browsing applications uh, within your browser. So the use case of this one is really big, but some of the scenarios like if you are uh, a librarian or an archivist or a, or a data journalist, you can create queryable interfaces within a web browser and you can publish it in web. So people can explore your database, visualize your database within the browser without uh, a server installation or nothing. So it just works as a static uh, published uh, SQL, I mean, SQL, SQL database, which has uh, more querying capacity. Then the latest development with SQLite is uh, something called WebAssembly. So what WebAssembly or WASM is, uh, a binary instruction format for a stack-based virtual machine, which is a little bit complex concept, but the idea is uh, you can run any complex piece of instructions as a WebAssembly within a browser. So SQLite recently released a WASM build. That means SQLite natively can run within a browser. This is a bit more powerful than uh, running the SQL.js instance in the browser. And WebAssembly is also supported in cloud services. So uh, we believe SQL WASM going to be one of the biggest adaptation in the future scenarios. Uh, the scenarios that includes um, more cloud-based web published uh, databases or data, uh, data visualization tools, et cetera. Um, so if you, if you want to publish a lot of data from, uh, from your archive or something for, for the end user, which which actually uh, access this data through a browser. Uh, you don't need to maintain complex server infrastructure or anything like that, but uh, the cloud edges or even within the local browser, you can run this SQLite instance with high power uh, visualization or more um, complex queries, uh, which saves a lot of uh, time bandwidth resources and also you can have highly interactive data exploration and visualization within uh, the browser and it is a highly futuristic technology so uh, we believe that Excalate is going to be uh, one of the most adopted database for the web in the coming years especially the web which you consider to be static and uh, run entirely within the browser then finally, uh, Dublin Core is working on a tutorial series on SQLite. So please follow Dublin Core in Twitter or visit uh, dublincore.org for updates on the dates and other uh, schedules related to this uh, tutorial series. And uh, I hope uh, some of you will be interested in going with the hands-on training on SQLite in our upcoming tutorial series. Thank you very much. And uh, if you have some questions, please. Uh, uh, and thanks for joining today. Thank you so much, Nishad. Um, and then, yeah, everyone, please, if you have any questions, please uh, type in the question box. Uh, in the meantime, um, I actually have a question uh, for you. So um, you you mentioned about the cultural heritage uh, institution uh, with SQLite and then 
Library of Congress recognized uh, SQL Live for that. Um, my assumption when I listen to your uh, <clears throat> presentation, the mixing data type, that sounds like a really good feature of SQL Live regarding the cultural heritage metadata standard. Um, I'm not sure whether this is correct. So can you tell us a little bit about the like, in what I mean, in what way, what features of SQL Lite um, particularly suitable with the cultural heritage focused metadata, like in comparison with the other types? Thank you. That's a really nice question because I, I really worked on some of the examples which involves cultural heritage. Um, one nice use case is, for example, you have a geospatial information about a cultural heritage entity, for example, a geojson file which explains the shape of an area, geo shape of an area, and uh, you want to store that as a JSON within SQLite. Uh, you can have that. Uh, that is an extended capacity of, of SQLite because you can store the whole shape as it is. And for example, then other problem is like some some places you cannot have a constraint for a data type. For example, you want uh, a column to be a latitude and longitude, but uh, at some cases you, you don't have that data, for example. So somebody want to enter, uh, not available, uh, but you defined it as integer. So a traditional database will comply. Uh, I cannot accept this. So either you're forced to input a zero or a null or something, but uh, when we consider about curating this sort of uh, intangible or even difficult to model data sets to a, a SQL database, SQLite's uh, flexibility of data structure gives, or data structure or data types gives us more comfort uh, to model these kind of complex scenarios and uh, keep the data as it is without compromising on uh, the constraints which we built on top of uh, the database model. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your answer, Nisha. Um, I think we, we also have a questions from audience. I think this can be a somewhat related to the first one. Uh, Mar Margaret asked, um, where is the SQLite not good a choice? So in another, another way, what's the weakness of SQLite? Where the SQLite is not preferable? That's a nice question. And uh, in fact, I, I gave it a thought while I was making my slides whether we should include that or not, because it's a very broad scoped question. I can <coughs> give a short answer to that. SQLite is really bad uh, if you have multiple right, because SQLite is not designed to do that. So multiple people are writing the same database at the same time. SQLite may not be a suitable choice, but uh, it's it's really up to the implementation which way you're going to implement because there are many ways to implement it. But SQLite is uh, highly scalable for reading, so uh, you can have multiple simultaneous reading. It it doesn't affect the capacity of the, uh, or it doesn't affect the performance. So. Uh, so the first checklist is if your your application is going to have multiple simultaneous writing, then probably SQLite may not be your choice. But again, if it is a really short uh, set of data and really, really short interval of writing, then probably you can still use it. But again, um, it's, 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 it's a, it's a, it's a like a choice you have to make after evaluating the scenario. Then another um, you places where you can actually use SQLite is instead of CSV files or text files. For example, for machine learning, people who just uh, cleanse some data or use some massive data, usually this data sets comes as CSV or TSV and other formats, and they're really bulky big. Uh, so when you use a text file, mostly the performance is very less and you have to do a lot of text processing when you have to merge two CSV tables, um, CSV files and 
this is too much work uh, to do in a programmatic paper. Those scenarios, uh, SQLite is a really good choice. And also you can use SQLite as an intermediary database because you are transferring data from two different sources or preparing a new set of data to publish in your website, stuff like that. It's a really good choice. Uh, then um, generally it's suitable for almost everything, uh, mission critical to uh, all other scenarios, but the technical limitations are something that you should consider that includes multiple writing and the huge size of data. For example, if you're gonna have really huge data set, billions of records, uh, then probably you can have other alternatives, but uh, SQLite is still capable to have billions of records and it, it natively supports up to 144 terabyte or something. And there is no practical that much large database there in the in production because none of the file systems can have that much large data set. So uh, it's basically a choice that you to make based on the specific use case. There is no no ready to make checklist to say yeah, yes or no. But in the SQLite website, they give you a real nice workflow to decide. Uh, but for considering the specific community of uh, uh, information science professionals, uh, it is tough to say uh, that those rules are applicable or not because uh, some project only one person create and curate the data. So that is why single write happens and multiple people visit the website or the project or they get the data. Uh, still SQLite is fine irrespective of the size. Thank you, Nishad. Um... Yeah, that's a really cl clarifying answer. <laughs> um, we also have a question about the tools, SQLite tools. So SQLite Studio, um, the main screen had a reference to extension PL. So yeah. Alan asked, is this developed in Perl and standard stands alone without the further pull resources? It's a compiled Perl. Uh, .pl is a extension of that domain. I, I don't think it's actually made in Perl. So, is .pl is the website's URL is .pl. So, oh, okay. It, it doesn't have anything to do with Perl. So, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you for clarification again. Um, and then I also um, okay here. Yeah. Uh, from in. How is the SQLite export function to share selected data from a database? So can you talk a little bit about the export function? Yeah, yeah it is one of the greatest feature of SQLite that you can export any SQL query in existing database. Then you can use the dot export command within SQLite or, or uh, SQLite, any software you use to export the result as any format, CSV or something. So some of the use cases where I use SQLite to do this export is if I have to export a set of huge um, data set combined from different tables and I want to produce a new set of data based on my selection, I regularly use that to do that kind of work. And another export option is to export to JSON. So I have a couple of CSV files, but I want to make a combined JSON file. I can still use that export function. Uh, so uh, it is a very handy feature within SQLite. And this also works in SQLite command line tools and most of the GUI tools out there can also do this export. And I, I think I understood the question correct. Otherwise, please uh, clarify what you're exactly looking into export so I can elaborate. Thank you, Nishad. Um, and I think we can also um, talk about the tutorial that we are planning here, because uh, we also have a question for that. Uh, Victoria actually asked about the URL for the tutorials. I think you post that to DCMI um, just you know, for further notice. Um, so speaking of that tutorial, um, my question, First of all, so will you also cover like, any SQL tools with graphic interfaces for beginners or you do, so are you going to use any tools or just, you know, simple command line? How would you uh, plan to do? <clears throat> uh, 
um, and that tutorial series is um, one of the biggest demand from the community is that now we have more data publishing comes in uh, Glam community. We publish data and also we want to publish uh, findable data based adopting most of the FAIR principle. And uh, then third use case is people want to publish data which others can easily visualize or interact with. Uh, so uh, the workshop, we will cover most of the basic or, or a little bit advanced SQL uh, basic query. Um, so we will do that in GUI tools as well as the command line tool because the basic idea is to introduce and give a working knowledge on SQL query. Yeah. And uh, obviously we will use a graphic interface, of course, uh, yeah. because uh, I, we expect more than half of our audience will be more comfortable with graphic like tools. And also we'll introduce a little bit uh, program interface so people want to write their own scripts in Python or something using SQLite. So one of the session we cover a little bit of programming and how to use uh, SQLite in, within programming scripts and etc. Then finally, we will cover something about publishing databases. So how to publish a web page or website to explore data, stuff like that, and some tools uh, to deal with that. So that's the plan. And uh, we, we think we will get more requirements from the expected participants once we announce it before we finalize the course content. But this is the overview. Yeah, thank you, Nisha. I think that's a really good balance. Um, uh, I, we, I think we can handle the one last question from uh, you and me. Um, so uh, maybe you can <clears throat> clarify. Um, so how do you store image in the file? It is uh, really easy with SQLite. Um, there is blob, so SQLite has a free data structure, so you can store an image as a binary blob within uh, SQLite. SQLite supports storing binary files uh, and uh, uh, many uh, photo browsing softwares and even thumbnail, they keep it in SQLite. So that's uh, one of the good use case. And it is observed that uh, storing image files in SQLite, small thumbnails, uh, is much faster than storing them in a separate file if it is thumbnail, not large files. But still SQLite support really large binary file so you can still save images within SQLite. Uh, we use it for scientific imaging, not just cultural heritage, but I have seen examples from cultural heritage where thumbnails being saved uh, with, uh, with, the, with the database itself. So because of the hack, easy to handle because you have hundreds of thousands of uh, thumbnails, then keeping it in a folder is really inefficient. Uh, because when you copy or something, it takes too much time and backup is too much tough. And But uh, SQLite works much better on that sort of small uh, file storage use cases. And of course, it works. Thank you, Nisha. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, there are some many, many thank you messages from the question uh, chat. Um, and then I also thank you for this comprehensive and informative um, overview of the SQL light and then we are really looking forward to uh, the you know like tutorial part of SQL so please everyone uh, follow this CMI <laughs> for further notice about it and then yeah again Nishad uh, you want to just give any final notes to everyone uh, I, I'm sorry that if I if I kind of uh, didn't cover anything that you expected to get from this webinar but uh, please send me an email nisha at thailat.org i will i'm always happy to answer any questions and i use it in professional environment for last couple of years or more than 10 years so i have solid uh, use cases in sqlite so if you have any really interesting use cases that you think uh, you, you would like to use sqlite with so uh, you can get back to me and I can help as much as possible. And uh, our workshop is coming. So, so tutorial CSS series is coming. So uh, please uh, join and come with your 
problems and use cases we can uh, try to discuss online and during the session and try to fix some of the problems during the session i welcome that sort of real world uh, questions and uh, discussions while we do our workshop thank you thank you so much Thank you. I'd like to thank Nishad Dalath for presenting this very interesting webinar. I also want to thank Inkyung Choi for moderating the session. I want to remind attendees that one of your many ACES member benefits is complimentary access to all webinars. A recording of today's webinar and a copy of the slides will be posted to the ACES website by tomorrow and will be available to all ACES members and paid registrants. Within 24 hours, attendees will receive an email with a recording of the webinar and a survey. I encourage you to complete it within seven days. Again, I'm Aminja Dawson with ACES staff, and I thank you for attending today's webinar. This concludes the session. Thank you, Aminta. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Aminta. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone.